Okay, so I'm working on some golf ball display cases. Now these are, I sell these directly off my website, and these are more of like a production piece that um, I'd really like to scale up a little bit because they they're honestly are kind of popular. Um, I've actually shipped these all over the world. One of these is going to, oh man, I, I want to say Norway. I forget where it's going, but it's going somewhere, not America. I'm actually quite impressed because I nailed this on the first try. I put all these in here hoping that I didn't screw it up, and I didn't. You know, there's, that's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I'm making three of these right now, and um, I'm going to load up the next run. So each shelf holds 100 golf balls, and this is 10 balls per shelf, 10 shelves. So this is for one case right here we've got set up. Okay, check it out. I got this really cool ball joint from a NIDA dust collection. They are the ones who provided my dust collector and all the ducting throughout the shop. I've also updated the planer now has a dedicated drop and the joiner has a dedicated drop so I don't have to swap them around which is really convenient. This has, I've, so what I've had up here is just an elbow coming off of that. I broke this apart there because I need to move that blast gate. Um, and that's ripped that elbow. I've broken two elbows, basically. Um, you can see one back in the corner. That's what it looks like when it's broken. So that's no bueno. So that's why I've got this, a ball joint that can rotate 360 degrees. Not a cheap solution, but I think uh, to do it right is the best way instead of continuing to break the elbow. So we've got to get this installed uh, and then I've got some work to do on the CNC. Okay, problem solved. Instead of taking the tube this way, I just took the screws out uh, for this little strap and then put some of these clamps on uh, to hold it vertical and it's moving beautifully now. Everything flows and moves and nothing gets hung up and it's ready to go. Okay, so all the parts have come off the CNC. I've come over here with these sides and squared up all these corners. I don't typically do this. The, the thing is, is um, I could run an eighth inch bit to cut these and have just a slight radius and make it work. Uh, with a quarter inch, it's too big of a radius. The shelf, you know, obviously our shelves have squared edges, so it's not gonna be a good fit. The trade-off is it's a lot more time on the CNC when you run a smaller eighth inch bit to cut these pockets. 
and I can square these off with a chisel uh, pretty quick. Um, so I put dominoes, that's how we kind of glue this case up, and that's what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and glue these three cases up, just drop together just like that, and then once they're all glued up, I can come back, add the bottom shelf in to these, and then um, hinge pocket them. We got the three doors cut down to width. I haven't cut them down the length yet. Uh, so let me show you the process. These are, these are built really close to the size of the case. Um, you can see as, as the width goes, they overlay about 3 16 And so I'll bevel this, I'll shape it. Um, and that's how you open the door. It's like a little grab you can get on the side. Now I have to take that into consideration when I s try to decide how I want the door to lay on the case. Um, if I have a style that looks like it's gonna have tricky grain to plane, cause we're gonna hand plane that. I want to make sure I put that towards uh, this side, so th or that away from this side. I'm sorry, on the hinge side. So looking at this one, both both styles have really good straight grain. So these are going to be simple and easy to do. This one's the same, really all of them. You know, they, with this rift on white oak, it's not going to be an issue. But if I was using walnut or something a little bit more figured, I would take that into consideration. So the next step here is this is going to be my hinge side. So I'll go ahead and leave this side flush to the case, and then we'll basically just from there, I can kind of feel where how my overlay is on the ends. If I'm square, it's pretty darn good and even. Um, it's a little heavier on this side, so I can slide it down. And then um, if it's even all around, I'll go ahead and cut it on the table saw. If it's a little off even and things are a little bit out of square and need to be adjusted, I'll hand plane it. But with this one, it feels really good and even across the board. So I'm just going to take it to the table saw, take a few light cuts, and then we'll clean everything up with a hand plane.
Okay, so I had a bit of a mic issue in this section of my video. I'm trying not to do a lot of voiceovers on these because it just adds a lot of work, but we have no audio. So I wanna kinda tell you what's going on. This is the, um, the record desk slash console that I built. Did two videos back, did a pretty in-depth video on this build. I'm on the last coat of oil on the top. Now I'm using general finishes, armor seal oil, and I typically don't sand it with an orbital. This is just a 400 mesh grit paper. It's real fine. Uh, paper on here and the reason I've gone to the orbital is because I had a few drip spots which is weird with oil I don't know how I managed to do that but you know the only way to really get those out is just to sand it with the orbital <clears throat> you really can't hand sand those out so I took the orbital to it and got it nice and sanded and cleaned it up a little tack cloth you don't want to push down hard on these because it'll leave residue on the table just really light pull the dust off clean it up real good and then uh, lay on uh, the last coat. So I've really struggled with this armor seal actually uh, lately. I feel like they changed the formula. It's really difficult to do tabletop surfaces and get it streak free. Uh, this used to be an absolute bomb proof finish for me and it's gotten a lot more difficult. So I, I may not use this finish anymore. Um, it, it came out really nice, uh, but it did have a slight bit of streaking in it. Uh, when you wipe it off, you don't want to leave all that access on there. I just really lightly wipe it down. I'm just using kind of a, a foam pad here and just getting the access oil off. Uh, and it just it usually works really well. And for this, this time, for some reason, it's just slightly streaky on me, which I was able to polish out, buff out with some with some wax after it cured. The one reason I really love the armor seal is I have it on my dining room table in my house and it really is super solid. I mean, it holds up really well. My kids have used that table and I can wipe it and clean it no problem. So it's a really good finish if you just can avoid the streaks. Okay, so that's done. Let that cure. We're gonna go back to the golf ball display case. We gotta make the back for this. Um, I'm doing shiplap, which is a lot like a tongue and groove, but it's kind of half of the tongue and groove. You'll see this in a sec. It's five pieces that'll just overlap each other. For a long time, I did do just a quarter inch plywood veneered back on these, but the shiplap looks so much better. And to be honest with you, it's not that hard of a process. Um, I resawed these out of eight quarter. So you get all you know book matched or sequence matched boards on the back and plane them down and run them through the wide belt. I don't put a lot of time into sanding them with an the orbital. I, I, use, I just basically take them right off the wide belt at 120 grit, I think on here because it is the back of the cabinet. Um, so you're not really, you don't really need to sand to a really high 220 grit or anything like that. So after I sand them, I head over to the table saw, set up this little sacrificial board, really small cut here. I'm just cutting basically the thickness of the, the saw blade. It's an eighth inch rabbit on these. Um, and I flip them so each side's different. And that's what causes them to stack together and allow some expansion and movement without creating gaps in your back. Okay, so we got all these ship lap made for the back. Each back has five, no, four pieces, sorry. Um, and they're about five and a half inches wide. A pretty simple way to make a back. Um, ship lap allows movement on each individual piece. So when I install it, I will just, you know, set this first piece in. Nail, 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 all the way down on probably multiple rows here and then drop the next piece in. Give myself a little bit of a gap. You don't need a lot. It's not going to move a whole lot. Maybe just a little hairline gap like that and do the same thing nail it down and just go all the way across and then once that's done it's hard to show we'll take this as a french cleat so you can see there's a 45 degree angle that drops in the top and these actually allow you to hang it this is not let me fix this there we go so this drops on the top this allows you to hang give a hanging point for the cabinet a little bit tight up there but we'll fix that there it goes um this will screw on and this actually adds some structure to the cabinet because without this i screw a, at least one screw into the side of the cabinet and then a couple in the top if you didn't screw one into the side the whole weight of this case would be on just this top um top section and then on the joints in here where this is connected i don't want to hang an oak cabinet with 100 golf balls just off you know the, this i think it would hold it but um, I would rather have the peace of mind in knowing that I've also got 
screws in here and this thing's kind of adding some strength by connecting these two pieces together i actually do the same thing on the bottom i put a little bottom piece down here and screw it and do that and that actually adds some structure and also gives you a way to hang it because i'll provide a cleat with it and i'll put this on their wall and then it just clips in and hangs up just like that so that's how the backs of these work um kind of cool i got a lot of sanding to do now to prep these for finish i'm gonna spray lacquer on them and then they're ready to roll. Okay, so that is the assembly. That is how it all comes together. It's kind of cool to see how um, all the parts kind of come together. And I actually have a really cool time lapse with the GoPro that I hooked up on the ceiling. So let's check that out now. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is kind of newer style you're seeing coming from me. I'm just trying to make the business work and the YouTube channel. For so long, I've been running, just basically doing different content for YouTube and occasionally catching things that are going on in the shop if it's interesting for the business. But I just, it, it got too difficult to do both that way. It just isn't working in the, in the business. Like I've mentioned in several videos, it's pretty busy. So, um, Moving forward, you're gonna see a lot of videos like this and I, I hope you guys like it because if you don't, it's gonna suck for my channel, but we'll deal with that. It's basically a combination of, you know, all kind of the styles I've shot in the past, the quiet stuff, the informational stuff, all that kind of meshed together to make, um, you know, I don't wanna call it a vlog, but basically just a, a weekly documentary of what's going on in here. This week we spent uh, the time building those three cases and I got the desk actually delivered today and it's at its new home. So a lot got accomplished and it's been a great week and i hope you guys have enjoyed the video hope you learned a few things remember i just fired up the patreon so if you want to see some more behind the scenes stuff um go over there and support the channel i've had quite a few people roll in and i really appreciate it and a quick shout out to jim pepper and taylor bond for being a couple of my patrons you guys are awesome so my hope there is to build a little bit of community teach what i know to you guys um share some of my knowledge if i can so uh don't forget that's there go check it out 
Appreciate you guys tuning in. Next week, we get to bust out this bad boy, if we can find her. Right there, the Argosy. I'm gonna be working on the framework for the bunk bed and the kitchen. And we gotta run um, vent pipes for the for the tanks, for the gray tank and the black tank. So I got work to do on that next week. Um, excited to bust it out and get some content made on that. That video will be coming hopefully in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time. All right, I just put the last coat of oil on um, the record console slash desk. So if you didn't see a couple videos back, um, somewhat of a build video on this. And basically this is kind of serving as a record console on a desk. So you got a knee space right here. He put, he's gonna put his record console right here or his record player. And then in here you can store records. It's a little bit dark, but you get the idea. Uh, pretty cool little setup. The, one of my favorite things about this is the uh, quarter sawn walnut. That's the back panel here. And then when you look at it from the back, you got the same setup, quarter sawn, cool little sap wood streaks in that. And then of course, two drawers, two little pencil drawers. We've got hand cut dovetails in those. Um, and then we've got these little hand carved pools. If you want to see an in-depth look at this, um, just an overview of the whole desk, head on over to my Patreon. There's also a little short video on how I carved out these little guys. And I've got a pretty in-depth overview of this entire uh, desk.